Amidst the coronavirus pandemic and on top of lockdowns, face masks and social distancing measures, Madagascar has set itself apart by its use of COVID organics, a remedy based on artemisia, a plant with proven therapeutic effects in the fight against malaria. It has already been sent to a number of African countries, including Nigeria. COVID organics is said to be preventive and curative remedy against COVID-19 based on the result of research carried out by the Malagasy Institute of Applied Research. Sahara TV seeks a medical expert opinion on the efficacy of using the herbal remedy and why Nigerians should be wary. Uh, yes, we have to subject this herbal remedy to the clinical processes and protocols of clinical trials in Nigeria before we allow human beings to use it. And, uh, there are obvious reasons for this. When you want to use, you have a new drug for a new variant of a virus that we never had before, it takes a long time to go through the necessary processes and protocols before you subject the drugs for human consumption. Whether it is herbal, whether it is orthodox, it is from Madagascar or from anywhere. In the first instance, the human being is a very complex organ, very complex organ, made up of minimum about 600 trillion cells. You have these cells in various organs, the eyes, the brains, the liver, the kidneys, the lungs, you know, the intestines, small and large, rectum, colon, muscles, different muscles, blood vessels, and so on. When people are talking of remedy, herbal remedy or whatever remedy to any ailment, most of the time they are concentrating only on the symptoms. The symptoms are merely manifestation. The underlying disorder may be superficial, it may be very deep, things you need to do before you now give people drugs. I've read it on social media that a lot of drugs, somebody used chloroquine or they list a host of drugs that heal them. And the common symptoms of COVID-19, as you know, you have this cough, sneezing, high temperature, and a host of other things. And uh, when you apply drugs and these symptoms seem to disappear, there are probable and possible effects of these drugs on some other organs of the human body. In other words, these drugs, they may be effective, effective in eliminating your symptoms. We only hope the drugs don't do any damage to your kidney, which will come out later. The drugs could affect your liver, it could affect your brain, it could affect your heart, it could affect any other thing. So this is why you do not just take in any drug, hook, line, and sinker, because it has worked in Madagascar and a few other countries. You must pass it through your own clinical protocol. That's number one. Number two, let us not completely ignore this conspiracy theory that is flying all over the world about the population of the African continent. And you and I know that for some thousands of dollars and so on, fellow Africans can betray fellow Africans. <laughs> I mean for money. So you cannot entirely rely on something from Madagascar. And, uh, you know, central to this conspiracy theory is China. They have a lot of money. They have almost literally invaded the continent of Africa. They've, in fact, taken over some countries, a few countries in Africa, and nobody really knows their intention. Yeah, the conspiracy theory of the population agenda may be real, it may not be real. But in Nigeria, where we have 200 million people, and with the level of sophistication in this country, a level of education, exposure in virtually every sphere of human endeavor, 
we should not just be taken in by any propagandist um, agenda. Okay, so have, do, um, do, do, doctor, let, yeah. let, 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 me, let me ask you, ask you, I mean, considering the fact that uh, global death toll from COVID-19 is nearly 300,000, can we really afford to disregard the potential treatment, particularly at this time? You don't take a risk. Hmm. The fatality rate of COVID-19, my dear brother, well, in developed parts of the world, they say it's about 5%. But so far in Nigeria, it's hovering between 1.5 and 2.5%. Yes, the loss of any human life at all costs must be avoided, if you can. But then, in the haste to avoid the loss of human life, you don't expose the majority of Nigerians to potential danger that can come up in the future and now eliminate by far many more people or this they don't, don't make disable them in one way or the other that they can no longer be useful to themselves or to society hmm. for me the level of the fatality rate at least so far in nigeria we should not be too much in the haste to further compound our problem we must go through the clinical processes that's my own view. Yeah. Doctor, Doctor, okay. sorry. Uh, one, one, for the sake of our viewers, a, a, a concerning question is, what exactly are the clinical protocols or clinical trials that, this program, that has to be involved with uh, validating a drug cell? Beautiful question. When you have reports that a particular, or certain particular chemical agents or biological agents are active in curing a particular disease, you first of all test the chemical components of this medication first. You analyze them. The first thing is analysis of the contents of the herb. Then secondly, once you analyze those, the contents, you now study the possible effects of those chemical agents in the human body, but the first place is in the animals. Um, you use animals as guinea pigs, mouse, rabbit, and so on. You do series of tests over these animals. It takes some time, you know. Then you look at the reaction of the animals before you now start to now test it on human. But before they advance to human organs, they now have to test the agents on mouse, rabbits, that's guinea pig, rabs, rats, mouse, and so on. See how they react to it. Look at their organs and so on. After you have satisfactorily gone through that process, it is then you now begin to try a few individuals again <laughs> before you begin to try individuals in numbers. So it takes. I mean, no matter how much you want to fast track it, I don't think it can be less than one year. Mm. But for me, it is much better to go through those processes than to subject human beings to drugs, the chemical contents you don't know, their effects, possible latent, latent effects on human organs you don't know. And that would be very, very dangerous. So we must go through the protocol. Now, uh, doc D Doctor, uh, there is a question that the, uh, another medication that has actually been used uh, it, 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 with regards to COVID-19 has it involves uh, remdesivir, uh, chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, chloroquine, and others, yes, which have yes, received yes. the necessary marketing authorization. The question is, a lot of us still don't even know how many, what the possible side effects of these drugs themselves are. Could you explain that on that? I mean, is there, if this drug, for example, if this remedy had actually come from Europe, will we be, I mean, worried? Of course worried. First and foremost, you know we are in an endemic malaria zone. Nigeria is an endemic malaria zone. That's number one. And we have been using chloroquine and chloroquine products for years. Yeah. <laughs> And because of this, we cannot just
I think we lost you there, sir. We, we, we... Now take up any chloroquine. If we had to rush out to the UCH, to the psychiatric unit, some people they had to chloroquine by terrible generalized itching. Some react by watering of the eyes and a lot of other things. So because okay. Nigeria is an endemic malaria zone, where we have been using chloroquine and chloroquine derivatives here for years, if you now want to introduce chloroquine here now for COVID-19, you must take a lot of precautions. I'm sure some other colleagues will tell you that there are case notes of patients in their hospital on which you write in red, in red, that red means danger. We asked to. I wanted to take a quote from uh, the president of Madagascar with regards to uh, yes. their conducting the, the, clinical the, trials or clinical observation. He said, and I quote, that we are not conducting clinical trials, but rather clinical observations in line with guidelines from WHO. And from these guidelines, they have conducted this clinical observation based on the study protocols to observe the impact. Now, what is the difference between clinical trial and clinical observation? <laughs> to me, it's merely semantics. Hmm. <laughs> semantics, purely. Because there is no way you can do clinical observation on somebody on whom you have not applied the drug. And what is clinical trial? And that's what they do. The, what it means is that um, they went straight on human beings. They did not want to waste time. They believed so much in their product, so they did not go to the rigors or the protocol of animal testing, mouse, and so on. That's the only difference. That, 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 there is no observation you want to do. It has to be on human beings if you use the drugs on humans. But for us, I do not advise that. And I'm happy the Director General of uh, NAPDA has said what I have said clearly. Whatever remedy is being brought, we must subject it through our own processes. 